Justin Trudeau caught funneling taxpayer money to the anti-hate network in order to silence people who have conservative views. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. We've talked a lot about Bill C-63 on the channel, and we've mentioned how Justin Trudeau is essentially trying to weaponize hate speech online, or at least, as Pierre Polyev quotes, the speech that Justin Trudeau hates, which is any kind of criticism that comes his way. Now, they've talked about the severities of the penalties that should come from these, including um, Arif Varani saying that we should be under house arrest, that uh, under extreme measures, it can go towards very large financial fines or even life imprisonment, depending on the situation. Now, are they going to strip the internet of everything that they agree with that's offensive? Heavens no. It's merely to silence conservative thinking people or what they call alt uh, right-wing extremists. <laughs> that, that essentially is, is what they've labeled our side of the spectrum, or I should say the, the, the average thinker's side of the spectrum. I'm, I'm not necessarily labeling anybody who's watching this video. Um, you're free to think how you want. After all, we should be living in a democracy where you're allowed to make your own political choices and your own opinions on government as well as what policies benefit you. That's the whole point of voting, isn't it? Well, we're going to get into that. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on here, and, and sometimes I'll cover things from other channels, but but here on uh, Street Politics Canada, of course, they've been talking about how Justin Trudeau is apparently busted paying third parties to harass conservatives. So I wanted to show a little bit of that excerpt and then talk about what I've pulled up and why this is a huge conflict of interest and a huge problem in our country. So let's take a listen to what they have to say. New documents reveal that Trudeau's government has been financing lobby groups hundred thousand of dollars to file lawsuits against the government opposition. It exposes the depths of corruption and deception Trudeau is willing to go to punish dissenting voices and consolidate power. Using taxpayer dollars to bankroll frivolous legal complaints and censorship demands against conservatives is a gross abuse of state resources for partisan gain. Right off the bat, that is an abuse of power. Um, that shouldn't be allowed just because you don't like what somebody says about you. I mean, I'll be honest. If you take a look at my YouTube comments feed over the last week, it has been overrun with liberal bots. For the most part, my channel stays pretty clean out of the drama end of things uh, and out of any kind of hate in the comments or anger or aggression. But lately over about the last week, week and a half, it's slowly been ticking up. Ever since uh, we hit the 20,000 subscriber mark, everything just kind of changed. All of a sudden I start getting people in defending Justin Trudeau or saying that uh, the videos I'm making are out of line or nonpartisan. And of course, if you've been on this channel for a long period of time, you'll notice that 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 I've called out Pierre Polyev from time to time. I've called out every politician when I see it's fit. I think it's important that we as Canadians have the ability to not always cheer for the same team, but rather keep an open mind as things can change in politics at a, at a heartbeat's notice. Now, they get a little further into where the money is coming from and what exactly the critical end of this is, but I'm just, I, I just kind of wanted to make a statement that I believe this is now moving into the online territories as they push for this bill. As again, I don't know if you guys have seen it, maybe you can let me know in the comments, but I've definitely seen an uptick, uh, especially anytime I peek my head into the comment section of YouTube to see uh, liberal bots in the comments trying to derail uh, every video that comes out, but let's continue. Trudeau is essentially weaponizing Canada's legal and regulatory systems to carry out personal vendettas at public expense. Documents reveal his administration quietly funneled taxpayer dollars to the Canadian anti-hate network, enabling them to wage crackdowns on dissenting voices. This supposedly anti-hate organization actively tried to conceal these payments, only surrendering the damning records after facing court orders. The group's disrepute and lack of transparency should appall all Canadians. They previously pushed dangerous falsehoods blaming rebel news for inciting dangerous attacks. More recently, Canadian Anti-Hate Network was forced to apologize for lobbying accusations against a pro-life organization. Yet despite this history of dishonesty and harassment, Justin Trudeau saw fit to have his government sponsor them to intimidate designated enemies. This sums up the sorry state of public discourse under his leadership, your tax dollars funding smears and frivolous complaints against his critics. The fact that the Canadian Anti-Hate Network wanted to keep its government payments hidden exposes their own lack of transparency. 
Yet Trudeau keeps funneling the public funds to wage lawfare against his designated enemies. Trudeau's online harms bill takes this attempted muzzling of opponents to the next level. By allowing complainants to extract up to $20,000 directly from each target, Trudeau aims to financially ruin those who dare criticize his government. Again, we've talked about this and we've talked about the slippery slope that's going to derive from this going through. And and it's it's very clear that when you think about things now, I'm not trying to I, I want to make it very clear. This is merely observation uh, at this point, what I'm about to state and that um, what I've noticed over the last, I'll say, decade. Now, when you get into things like the Me Too movement, um, I I. I I come from a family that has experienced abuse. I know people who have experienced abuse. And I understand that when you're um, under duress, when you're in an abusive lifestyle, sometimes it's difficult to speak up. It's hard to come out when negative things are happening to you or you're being pushed out of pressure into a position um, that results in um, any kind of, of advances that you're not privy to or uh, welcoming to. That being said, I sometimes question the authenticity of some claims when you've noticed, especially in Hollywood, when you've noticed um, anytime, no, believe me, I'm not defending anybody in Hollywood, but anytime somebody gets accused of something these days, all of a sudden about 50 people show up out of the woodwork and say, yep, me too. It was all me as well. I got it as well. And usually those people are getting book deals and they're getting all kinds of things thrown at them for their exclusive stories. And again, I'm not trying to downplay anybody who's been through that movement, but from time to time, and it has been shown in courtroom sessions, especially when you look at people like uh, Johnny Depp and um, Amber Heard uh, with the, the false accusations she made in his general direction and how it absolutely destroyed his career. Um, or at least put a damper on his career for the foreseeable future, um, costing him millions of dollars in fake allegations. It makes me wonder with a hate speech bill like this, how often are we going to see people that will be upset or triggered by somebody's online posts and say, well, I'm going to get them back. I'll say that they, they threatened me or they did something that was hate speech. And you can easily generate with AI, you can generate anything you want these days. There are ways to generate false te text messages. There's ways to generate anything on the internet in terms of evidence. Now, again, I'm not going to get into the science of it all. Police do have ways of reversing and checking where those messages came from, call logs, things like that. But again, it makes me question the validity of how many people are going to come forward just hoping for a payday, if that makes sense. Now, when we talk about the anti-hate network, and we talk about the money that Justin Trudeau is wasting, on the anti-hate network shows right here. Canadian anti-hate network asks the feds for $5 million of taxpayers money. And this was back in September of 2023. There are many, there are as many as 6 million people in Canada who are uh, conspiracy theorists, according to the Canadian anti-hate network. So a very small, like a, a, a small chunk of the Canadian population apparently are conspiracy theorists. And the federally funded media monitor says it needs more funding to counter those who would do away with our liberal democracy. Notice how the word liberal is in there. We believe 10 to 15% of Canadians are consuming far right content and believe in one or more far right conspiracy theories. The organization wrote in a submission at the, uh, to the common finance committee. Now, What's important about that statement is, first off, it doesn't matter what people are consuming. We have the God-given right to consume whatever we please. We should have the right to express ourselves in a free country, which, of course, Justin Trudeau wants to take away. That statement in itself basically says that the Trudeau liberals and the anti-hate network are upset if you're not a liberal. And that's a huge problem because that again is imposing a dictatorship. You must believe, oh, holy leader, and not your own personal beliefs and what, what structure is necessary in a political landscape. And this is where we get into very slippery territory. They're asking for $5 million of Canadian taxpayer money just in this one instance to prevent people from spreading far right, quote, conspiracy theories. Now, if you look last week to our video, of Pierre Polyev coming out with the Winnipeg lab leak um, 
report, I guess, or or the the information on what went on there, which was essentially treason, which Justin Trudeau committed. Um, of course, when asked about it, Justin Trudeau simply said, Pierre Polyev is drumming up votes. He's spawing around uh, uh, conspiracy theories and, and peddling lies in order to garner and filibuster votes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who Justin Trudeau thinks is going to believe a silly statement like that when they have quotes, documentations, phone records, uh, money going out into certain accounts, testimony, you name it. It's all in that very thick document Pierre Polyev held in the House of Commons. Justin Trudeau even going as far as to sue a speaker that wanted to bring that report to light just in order to hide the corruption that was going on between the Canadian and Chinese government by allowing them to come into our country and essentially attempt to harm our citizens. Keep in mind, this is a terrorist organization, as Pierre Polyev calls it. Not my words. The organization has applied for funding for $5 million over five years to act as an unofficial anti-hate watchdog for the Canadian government. This is very scary. Um, it's scary because we've seen no end to Justin Trudeau's tactics when it comes to how he runs elections. Um, I, I, again, despite polling, despite what current polls are saying about Pierre Polyev, if there was an election today, that he would win a majority government. I still have that small piece inside that says there's going to be messing around in the next election. There's going to be questionable behavior. And we've seen that with the NDP assisting the Liberals. And, and I'll be honest, I said it earlier, I'll say it again, and I said it in another video. Um, I said that either Jagmeet Singh wouldn't be able to prop up this government any further, or they were going to literally go down with the ship. And it seems that they've chosen the latter, that they're going to go down with the ship and, and essentially bail out these Liberals for as long as it takes. And I, I really think that this is going to destroy the NDP party from the inside out. The only person who stands to benefit benefit from that is Jagmeet Singh. Uh, of course, when he gets his pension and he'll leave and just about every other NDP will lose their job, they'll lose their seats. And uh, the party that Jack Layton tried to build for so long will essentially be downgraded to nothing. Um, I, I'd be shocked if they had more than 10 seats in the next, uh, the next federal election. Um, and now, again, I'm basing that off of the current projections as well as where polls are headed for those parties. But anything could change between now and the time of a federal election. But let me know what you guys think about Justin Trudeau trying to suppress conservatives, uh, trying to shut down their voices and essentially flood networks to make sure that people aren't getting the right messaging that works for them. And when I say the right, I mean like the right side of the spectrum. Um it's appalling that a government will not allow you to exercise your right to an opinion. And, and I'm going to be very interested to read what people have to say in the comments. We'll see how many liberal bots are hanging out in there. Make sure to tell them the fringe sent them or said hello, I should say, when, uh, when you see them in the comments. But ladies and gentlemen, if it's your first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. Uh, if you have subscribed to the channel, make sure you're still subscribed and that you've turned on your bell for notifications. YouTube has um, a real problem with sometimes unsubscribing people or turning off their notifications. Make sure to join us here on the channel every Friday night for our live streams where we do uh, Friday Night Fringe. Of course, uh, if you're watching this video um, prior to March, uh, March the 8th, then Friday, March 8th, there will be no live stream. I will be out of town. Of course, I will do a makeup stream on the following Sunday on uh, March the 10th. Um, and then after that, all streams will return to Fridays as regular. If you haven't subscribed as well, keep in mind, it looks like we've we're, either by the time you've watched this video uh, or the filming of this video, we're about to hit 25,000 subscribers, which means I will be doing the uh, the, the suicide uh, death chip challenge here on live stream. I'll be doing that on Friday, uh, March the 16th or the 15th, I believe. I believe it's the 15th. Uh, on, on the fr my day fr Friday, March the 15th stream. God, I, I'm so tongue-tied trying to get all this out. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to join us for all of that. I hope you guys have a great day and enjoyed this video. I'll catch you on the next one.